Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to see so many of you here today. I'm Gozi, the Digital Network Officer at the Alliance, and I wanted to share some thoughts with you today. I wanted to describe some of my engagement activities in my role over the last year. I'd like to share with you why I believe a diverse and collective voice is the best approach for influencing policy for the benefit of people in this field. Language is a funny thing. It changes to suit or define a context. We can slip into using words and phrases that are not quite fit for purpose sometimes. I'd like you to take that thought away today. Take, for example, digital inclusion, engagement, representation, lived experience. Let's start with the definition. Digital, using or relating to digital signals and computer technology. Inclusion, originally from the Latin words includere, which describes a shutting in. The use of inclusion later became more defined as providing equal access of resources, opportunity and information for people who might otherwise be marginalised. The term digital inclusion describes access and use of digital resources with the key aims of being easy to use, saving time and improving something. There are few aspects of human life on Earth that do not now include some interaction with a digital process or component. And I challenge you to name one. Because while we've seen more technical accessibility, more sophisticated devices, um, and some ethical shifts in the corporate landscape, we've also seen less robust safeguarding of digital information gathering platforms, more complex fraud and discriminatory algorithms embedded in digital capabilities like artificial intelligence. And this is happening across sectors, how we bank, job search and socialise. I mention this because language changes to define or suit a context, but also changes. And so the definition of digital inclusion can mean one thing today and something different tomorrow. So whose job is it to close the gap? The picture isn't very different when we're trying to understand who's using digital resources for health and well-being. In the time I've been with the Alliance, I found out a couple of important things. People want knowledge trust, and they need a jump-in point. So where is this jump-in point? Some recent research and insights are showing that device ownership in itself is high across the UK and now considered less of a factor in digital exclusion. But pay plans are still discriminatory. Awareness of options is limited and the language of digital well-being can sometimes be off-putting. In all this in a landscape where person-centred care has been such a strong theme in the challenge to transform our nation's health, I believe that a sensible approach to community engagement can drive awareness and first steps into digital healthcare decisions. It has to be a step-by-step -step process that is sustained, checked and improved, enhancing empowerment. But for many, this can be secondary to more pressing issues, poor network coverage, inaccessibility, language or communication misconceptions, juggling work and caring, or indeed all of the above. 
The Scottish Government is committed to a long-term plan to deliver transformational change in digital health and social care services. The ambition is to create more ways for us to use digital technology to help us look after our health. There is a desire to give people more control and choice in using digital health and social care services. And there is already a lot of progress in this field. I believe that good engagement at grassroots level offers a really viable jump in point. Since starting as the Digital Network Officer, I've had a few months to work alongside groups and networks who've given me insights into their digital inclusion activities. Here's a short clip from Rana Shams of Networking Key Services. I got to know Rana and some of her community over the last year. The organisation she works for has taken an innovative approach to overcoming real and perceived barriers. For a community of people, some of you may refer to as hard to reach. Remember what I said about language. Amartya Sen once said, empowering women is a key to building a future we want. And I couldn't agree more. Hello everyone, today I would like to salute all the women in my life, my mother, sister, friend and my mentors who have influenced me in becoming the woman I am today. My name is Rana Shams and I am a daughter, sister, mother, friend and above all, a woman of substance. I lead the digital inclusion project at Networking Key Services in Edinburgh. The project that I am working in at the moment has given me an opportunity to work at grassroots level to support digital inclusion and access to digital services for South Asian women. We at NKS have identified that there is low digital literacy among South Asian women due to lack of confidence, lack of motivation, language, etc. The session that I run at NKS are tailor-made to users' requirement and are flexible to the need. They are focused on upskilling, self-management, educational and also improve knowledge and accessibility of digital health tools. All these sessions are continuously monitored and evaluated and feedback is obtained at the end of each ses session. These sessions help them to gain new skill and boost their self-esteem and confidence and empower them to learn more and be digitally inclusive in the big digitalized world. The journey has so far been very rewarding. I have seen people gaining confidence with the use of technology. They start with apprehension at first, but soon with knowledge and awareness, they now love to explore different technologies. I would like to share a feedback from one of a service user. She was not at all in favor of technology, even though she had a smartphone. It was of little use as she didn't know how to use it. But now with knowledge and awareness, and I would say lots of practice, she is able to use her phone to communicate and keep in touch with her family and friends. She can now use transportation app and use voice note to simplify her search. She has now become aware of NHS Inform website. She said, life is now a little bit easier for me and I want to learn more. 